it involves a wide range of skills from working with water quality to doing everyday calculations of uh, physics on pumping and piping and filtering to biology of marine organisms and fish, feeding, uh, health management, diseases, genetics and breeding. We do propagation techniques for shellfish, for finfish. We teach the program not as a narrow science but as a real broad approach so that students could leave the program and go into any number of areas of science and take jobs in uh, lots of different types of uh, organizations. The hands-on aspect of this program is integral to the learning that we do. Uh, it's one thing to, of course, lecture and put a bunch of bullet points up on a PowerPoint slide and talk about facts, but they don't really sink in until you actually see them in action, and that's where the hands-on aspects comes into play. For example, we can teach how to grow clams and how to harvest clams, but until you get out there pulling the rake, you don't know really how hard it is to get clams up. This is just a research sanctuary that we use for teaching and education purposes. I'm gonna to try to find the edge of a, of a bed which is made out of um, plastic netting, and that, that'll protect them for a while until they get bigger. What I can do then is um, kind of dig right here at the edge. And so you can kind of see. So you can hear a squeaking. That's how you can tell there's a clam. Normally we dig with our hands because you can't get a rake in a, a well-planted clam bed. It's just too, too many. It's like digging in a gravel road. So here's a different uh, variety of sizes. This is called notata and it occurs at about 2% in nature. So this one we call a homozygous because it's got both recessive genes. And this one is called heterozygous because it's got one recessive gene, uh, but it still shows through and it's real pretty. It looks like it's got a zigzag pattern on the shell. We use that to teach genetics. We also, you can see the oysters that are growing over here. This is a, a, a new oyster reef that we started with some um, culch material. We planted it out and the oysters attached to it and then when the oysters grow then there's another shell there for a new oyster to grow and we can get years and years of oysters growing on top of each other. I mean marine biology, who doesn't want to be a marine biologist when, you know, when you're in high school and so we'd like to take that that interest uh, and love for sciences and marine and put that into an applied context so that you can see there is some uses for this. So today we're going to be doing a phytoplankton tow, kind of lower it down into the water and you're going to make sure there's no bubbles into the bottle when you lower it down, kind of let it sit there. And then you want to take your salinity and temperature. Okay. So you want to take and put your thermometer into the bottle of water. And while you're doing that, you need to take your salinity with your refractometer, put a drop of water on it, look in, and your salinity today is 32. And you take your temperature which is around 12 degrees Celsius today. And we do this to measure the turbidity and how far you can see in the water. You wanna let it float down until you can't see the white anymore. Which is right there. You wanna pull it back up and measure how far your turbidity is. So you can test salinity, temperature, hardness, pH, alkalinity, um, ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. So we have all these tests that you would learn and learn how to manage the equipment for testing it as well. Another tool we use here is a DO meter, which measures the amount of dissolved oxygen in a system. This probe here 
protected by a permeable membrane which locks in an electrolyte solution and keeps out water, only allowing dissolved oxygen to pass through. And we can go over here and use that now. Now we have to make sure we swirl the probe in the water because it's going to absorb any oxygen that's in direct contact with it. And eventually it'll level out and we can get an accurate reading. We also teach how to, how to feed organisms, feed fish, uh, and so the students actually make their own feed. We feed all the brood stock the same food. It's uh, a jelly belly mixture um, with uh, squid shrimp and fish protein added. Uh, we then add gelatin, let it gel, freeze it, and uh, bring it out as we need to and chop it up finely to feed to the brood stock. These guys right here are the blue line neon gobies. We have uh, neon doty backs in this tank. And we also have uh, orchid doty backs. The two things that we're the most proud of though, I think are, we've got Ocellaris clownfish and um, a yellow line neon goby, which is actually endangered. We've got about 5.2 million rotifers in that first bucket there. So if you were going to count them, you just want to take 10 one milliliter samples throughout the container just so you get a good representation of the population. Because there's usually so many rotifers in a small amount of water, you want to do like a one to 10 dilution. So we've got 10 milliliters of the sample. So we dilute that and then we can take a one milliliter sample from that, put it on a slide under a microscope, and then we can, we can count how many are in there, um, how many we have per milliliter. We can see the health of the rotifers. I, I try to have the students get a very good overview the first year so that they see kind of a little bit of everything that we do. And some point during that year, they will make a comment or they'll show a particular interest in one area and then I'll cue in on that and start to get them really involved in that area of our program. I like to see that learning aspect and I've, I've seen that over and over many times and sometimes that will actually turn into a business for that student. About 20 years ago I got a degree in marine biology and decided to kind of get back in touch with the marine biology part of it and hooked up with Skip here at CCC and got into the aquaculture. Started taking classes and I had no idea how to build systems or even hatch fish when I started. So I've learned to build recirculating systems, how to help, uh, hatch fish, how to take care of the fish, how to make food for the fish. Um, everything I've learned here, I've been able to apply to my business. I like working for myself. I have two small kids, so it kind of gives me the freedom to do what I want when I want. The, uh, the training that I've received here at Carter Community College has prepared me to start up my own business and um, it's given me the confidence and the knowledge that I feel uh, I'm going to need to do that successfully. Uh, this is our shellfish nurseries. We have them in the upwellers here. Each upweller is taken out and brought over to the table for rinsing. Water is run gently over top of them to clean off all excess dirt. The crop needs to be sieved to separate the larger growing oysters from the slower growing oysters. To do this, you take the oysters out and run them through the sieve, which will separate out the larger ones from the smaller ones. The smaller ones are then put back inside the container that they came from. While the larger ones are put back into a different container that has a larger mesh size. If, you're, if you think you might be interested in this program, I certainly would encourage you to uh, come down for a visit. And we'd be glad to take you on a tour. You, and you can see really how it would involve you.